Hey YouTube, thank you for watching the channel. This video is about the Navi app that is used on the Xiaomi Fimi X8 SE and how to best set it up to give you that perfect cinematic footage. So let's jump into it. Okay, so I've had the Fimi X8 SE for two months and it's almost the end of the summer and I want to share with you all what I've learned. So these are the lessons learned and this is the first video of the X8 series on how to get cinematic footage. This tutorial is specific to the Fimi X8 menus and settings that you need to set up before you start flying. So these are the things that you need to think about before you go out there trying to get some cool shots because if you're not set up right you're gonna miss the best shots of your flight so to do this I'm gonna start the screen recording on my phone I'm gonna go over all the Navi app icons and menu settings that you should take note of to get cinematic footage so let's just start this X8 and let's get to it All right, so here we are, guy, with the X8 SE turned on. So let's get started on the settings that we need to change to make cinematic footage. But first, let's start with the settings that will safely get out to your location and safely come back without any issue. First thing you need to do is hit the right upper hand corner. You hit the gear. And here we need to change the distance and the speed. Your flight distance and flight speed to the maximum value so we can get out to that location as quick as we can and then get us also to get out there as far as we can all right moving on to the next variable we'll need to change is your rth variable and you need to set this variable to higher than any of the structures that you are flying around so if you do have a disconnect your x8se will Increase in height, avoid those objects, and then come home safely because the X8 does not have any sensors. Okay, so if you change it here, you just hit the slide bar, hit the plus sign, boom, and hit check mark. Okay, the next settings that we need to talk about, hit check mark. Okay, we are done. Let's move up. And the next thing you need to set here is your fail safe variable to RTH. So RTH will be set so it will come back from the launch point location, the recorded launch point location. That's where it will come back. Yes, set precise landing on so your optical flow camera can then take note or take a picture of the launch pad and then precisely come back. To that location when returning home. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get started with the, the settings for the camera that will make cinematic footage. First thing you need to do is change your pitch speed. It is normally set at like 50%. Pitch the camera up and down with the left finger wheel. So it is currently set at 50%, and I'm going to pull the camera down. You can see that it's moving way too fast, right? So you need to, I personally like to change this to about 15%. And I'm going to hit the check mark. And now I'm going to pull down the camera. And you can see now that as I move the camera up and down, it is buttery smooth. And it's really nice. 
Sorry about that little glitch. So you can see I'm pulling the camera down. And now I'm going to push the camera back up. And it's nice, buttery smooth, and I can get it back to those thirds. Super, right? Okay, the next setting we need to change is this five directional buttons. And you need to personalize or customize it to these values. I personally like these values, and I recommend that you run these values. When you push the button up, it's going to give you the button the map when you push the button down and it's going to swing the camera all the way down and when you push the button to the left you're going to change your saturation value so when you push the button to the right you can change your contrast and when you push the buttons in the middle then that is going to switch between time lapse and video mode okay so let me show you what those look like right now i am now pushing the button up pushing the button up again pushing button to the to the left and I am going to push the button up to increase values of saturation you see that okay and then I'm going to push the button straight down the middle to set those settings now I'm going to push the button to the bottom and now I'm going to push the button bottom again and that swings the camera straight down and we'll push the button down again and it's going to bring the camera back up okay so as you notice I am the pitch it's on your lower left and the camera pitch value is set to 9.7 right now and I like that because that puts my subject in the thirds okay and if I push the button straight down I switch between time lapse and regular video modes you can see right here yeah, the icon is totally different mm -hmm. and it's got this uh, looks like a clock and uh, and the movie camera so I'm going to push it again and that is it so that is it for five directional button and the general settings now we're going to move into the camera settings okay first thing you need to do is switch out of auto mode into manual mode and here is where you set your ISO and you can now change your ISO by moving the wheel right index wheel and let's get back into the regular view and you can see now that the ISO is lit up green at the bo bottom icon at 400 and we'll push the button up again and now it's 800 okay so I normally outside most of the time it's going to be running at 100 okay the other things that you're going to have to change is your white balance either set it between sunny or cloudy I'm usually sunny or cloudy most of the time I fly in the sunny conditions so I usually have it on sunny because if you leave it an auto and your sensor faces a real bright sunny spot it will change your exposure and then all of a sudden when you get back into the shadowy area then it will swing again and in post-production it will just look horrible it will be really hard to edit and the footage will not be cinematic enough to give you that really wonderful flow in your editing. All right, so let's go on back here. The other thing that's important here, I usually stay between general and film. So everybody complains about the Femi BN too blue. Well, you can go with a film and it'll make it softer, more like a sunny day, right? So, all right so the, let's move on and then we can choose the style this is where you can personalize it and you can see that you can quickly ruin your shot and I made a couple of these mistakes and I'll illustrate those mistakes for you all right so let us hit that right arrow there with the circle that reset your values get back into it here all right video quality leave it on high you can choose medium normal and high leave it on high all right video size is really important also okay at 30 frames a second and you see it right there it's super nice right 24 frames a second same thing now we're trying to go 2.7k at 60 frames a second you see the sensor cropped in a lot right 
so we can use this as a telephoto lens, right? That is really super sweet. And then we can switch in 2.7K between 30 frames a second and 24 frames a second. If you're running at, uh, the sensor at 2.7K, I'd recommend you stay at 24 frames a second. Okay? Now, watch this in 1080p when we go 100 frames per second. It, that is when you are going to be filming that fast moving boat, that water skier, that wakeboarder. You want to put it in no settings so you can do that slow mo and pose and make it look really nice. Right? Give you that cinematic slow motion look. If you really want to go for the cinematic slow motion look, then go to that 720p, 200 frames a second, and look how much this thing crops in. A whole lot, right? So let's, we can use this to our advantage, guys. We can use this as a tele, telephoto lens, okay? Let's jump back into the setting that I normally stay at, and I stay at 4K, 24 frames a second, because in post-editing, I can go ahead and zoom in or punch into the video without losing my resolution, right? The quality of the video. That's the huge difference or advantage in 4K video. Disadvantage is it takes a lot more time on processing power to move those big files around, right? And in the balance, I think, between HD and Ultra HD is this 2.7. 2.7K is 60 frames a second or 24 frames a second, okay? But you, as you guys can tell, there is a cropping factor there. So those are the things that you have to think about when you are out there filming, guys. I hope this guy this helps you out, okay? Let's get back into the settings again. And here we are. And there's not much more we can uh, talk about. And that pretty much tells you all the settings that we have here. So film general, okay? All right, I know we have gone over a lot of settings. The Femi X8SC is actually pretty decent. The only thing I wish they had was we would have a histogram that allows us to see and dial in our settings just perfect, right? The DJI products have that and we love using it. All right, so let's talk about the grid lines. Why do you want to turn on the grid line? So you can use the rule of thirds when you are flying. You're going to want to put the horizon in one of the upper or lower thirds. Or subject, you're going to put in one of the four thirds. Now, your composition has more visual interest because you are playing in the thirds versus having a subject in the middle and that is not as interesting if you are trying to get cinematic footage. The grid allows you to see the thirds and to put your horizon and subject in one of the thirds. If you're interested in additional topics on the Femi X8, please let me know. You're now set up with the best possible setup to go out there and get the best cinematic footage out of the Femi X8. The Femi X8 camera settings are limited compared to other drone camera settings and tools. However, the quality of the Femi X8 footage is awesome. So don't worry about what the features that the Femi X8 does not have because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter the camera you're shooting on. What matters is the way you shoot the camera. I guarantee you, if you take someone and give them an X8 and have them fly, and, a, and they are very talented and very good at getting cinematic footage, and then you give a new BA Phantom 4 Pro, the Femi X8 footage is going to be much better. Even though the Phantom 4 Pro has better camera, with better codecs, with better menus, and better tools, if you don't know how to fly and get cinematic shots, then the footage is going to be awful. All those additional settings, menus, and tools doesn't matter unless you can fly and shoot with a cinematic style. 
So hone in your skills, really work on not being jerky and getting those fluid shots and new ways to tell the story because that is what cinematic footage is all about. All right, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button and support the channel. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.